I greet you all in the name of our soon coming Lord and Savior Christ Jesus and I thank you all for joining us here on this platform as we are going to be looking at um, an important message. We continue with our series on the latter rain and um, the message for today is uh, wake up message to the Adventist church and uh, shall we pray our kind and loving father we thank you for the gift of life we thank you for the time to study your word in our deep slumber may you wake us up by a message from above and may we bow down at your throne as we ask of forgiveness of thee and may you pour your spirit upon us as your people in jesus name we pray amen would like to thank the lord for giving us yet another time to look into the word of god and uh, today we are in the 25th chapter of the book of matthew and um, allow me to read from the word of god then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom now uh, this is one of the important uh, parables that christ gives as um, he is uh, speaking with uh, uh, maybe four of his disciples on the uh, mount of olives and uh, remember uh, Jesus has spoken about the destruction of Jerusalem as uh, Matthew chapter 23 concludes. And the disciples gather around Jesus and they start to ask him, when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of your coming? And uh, Jesus here combines the destruction of Jerusalem and that which has to do with uh, his second coming. And uh, with regards to his second coming, there are several parables that Jesus gives in the uh, Olivet Discourse in Matthew chapter 24 and um, Matthew chapter 25 forms again uh, those parables that Christ gives to his uh, disciples and um, this parable of the ten virgins amongst many of those parables including that servant who says my Lord delight his coming including that parable of the talents uh, including also the parable of the sheep and the goats uh, it is uh, uh, one of the important parables that um, he has a message for us to prepare for the coming of Christ but now we want to have a special attention of uh, the um, this parable and uh, the letter rain and um, Christ says the kingdom of heaven is likened uh, to ten virgins and these ten virgins they took their lamps and they went forth to meet their bride bri to meet the bridegroom and uh, brothers and sisters we don't doubt as the word of god says in the book of psalm chapter 119 verse 105 the bible says thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path and this lamp it is the word of god and um now you, you realize that this parable occupies not only an important place in the history of the church but it also occupies an important place in the present time where we are living you see that as christ is speaking to this parable it was a perfect re reflection of what the jewish nation was about to do those who, who were ready they were going to enter in with the bridegroom who is christ but those who were foolish they only had their lamps but without the spirit of god which zechariah refers to as um in it is the is saying not by might not by power but by my spirit said the lord and um here is what the review and herald has to say of this parable we know that this parable had an important place in the midnight cry in the experience of the adventist uh, body in the experience of the advent movement of 1842 up to 1844 where we had uh, the heralding of christ moving from the holy place into the most holy place where we have a representation of a special work that was going to happen just before Christ enters into the most holy place and the message was get ready get ready the bridegroom 
Kameta. But now, here is uh, what the uh, Review and Herald, August 19, uh, 1890, paragraph 3 says. I am often referred to the parable of the ten visions, five of whom were wise and five foolish. This parable has been and will be fulfilled to the very letter, for it has a special application to this time, and like the third angel's message, has been fulfilled and will come to will continue to be present truth till the close of time. So, brothers and sisters, this parable is very, very crucial for the people who are living upon the ends of the world. For this reason, that it is the as the first and the second angel's message has been fulfilled and especially the third angel's message this parable will continue to be present truth if ever there was present truth it is that truth that aspect of our message which shows us the present position of christ not only the present position of christ but our present duty and brothers and sisters in this parable we are taught that uh, the bridegroom is on his way but not only only that the bridegroom is on, on, on his way, that us as his people, we have a duty to watch and to wait for the bridegroom because we do not know the hour or the time of his uh, coming. Now, as this parable info, uh, 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 unfolds, it says um, five of these visions, they were wise and five were foolish and the foolish took their lamps and they took no oil with them but the wise took their vessels with their lamps and remember we said um, the lamp represents the word of god the word of the lord is a light unto our path and a, is a lamp unto our, uh, our 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 feet and a light unto our path and uh, they but the foolish now, what makes them foolish is they took no oil with them. And Zechariah says, uh, the, this was the word of the Lord unto Ze Zerubbabel. After uh, Zechariah has been shown um, the olive branches emptying their oil into the lamps and the lamps were shining and Zechariah asks what this be my lord and he, this is the reply of the of the lord this is the word of the lord unto Zerubbabel my servant not by power nor by might but by my spirit saith the lord and uh, here we should understand that uh, the 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 oil represents the spirit of god so here is the combination which the christian should take into his ministry the christian should take into his uh, daily life the christian should take into the work that god has trusted to them they should take the word of god on one side and they should take uh, the spirit of god to the other side remember in our previous sessions on the latter rain we have emphasized the need to ask daily for the spirit of god but not only do we need to ask of the Spirit of God. We need also to study the Word of God. And Ellen White writing in the book, The Great Controversy, the chapter 37, which is entitled The Scriptures, Our Only Safeguard. She says, uh, the Bible should never be studied without prayer. Why should the Bible never be studied without prayer? Because it is on our knees that we plead with omnipotence to pour the gift of the Spirit upon us. And brothers and sisters, if we do not have the Spirit of God, then we will only have a theory of the truth, but without the power, as we shall observe, as we'll be looking into the parable, we shall realize that uh, Timothy, he has the, Paul has these words to Timothy, that in the last days, people will have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And this is uh, what happens when we memorize verses, but without the Spirit of God. And the Bible pictures it in an unpolite way and it says those who know the theory of truth but without the spirit of truth they are foolish and the question is are we amongst the wise or we are amongst the foolish but we thank God amongst these ten virgins they were the wise who took 
oil in their vessels and also in their lamps. And um, here is what the book, The Christ Object Lesson says, page 414, uh, page 412, paragraph 2. The ten virgins are watching in the evening of this earth's history. All claim to be Christians. All have a call, a name, a lamp, and all profess to be doing God's service. All apparently wait for Christ appearing, but five are unready and five will be found uh, surprised, dismayed outside the banquet hall. Brothers and sisters, this is a representation of the Christians who are waiting for the second coming of Christ. This is a representation of Christians who are waiting and professing to believe that Jesus is coming again. And brothers and sisters, these they are watching in the midnight of Earth's history. All claim to be Christians in the evening of Earth's history. All have a call, all have a name, they have a lamp, and they profess to be doing God's service. Brothers and sisters, we are all involved one way or the other in the profession of saying we work for God. We claim to be working for God. But the question is, are you ready for the coming of Christ? Are you ready if the Savior is going to appear today? Are you ready if the Savior is going to say, I am descending today? Is your vessel filled with the oil of the Spirit? Brothers and sisters, this is the time when we should bow, weep, and cry between the porch and the altar to say, Lord, our vessels are empty. May you fill us with your Spirit. And the Bible continues to say, this is very intriguing. While the bridegroom tarried, Tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And brothers and sisters, I want to, uh, to suggest to you that uh, this, uh, this slumbering and sleeping should be uh, the lapse of the church from the Philadelphian condition into the Laodicean condition. This represents a state of complacency. A state where the church feels like they need nothing. A state where the church feels like uh, they are ready. Everything is prepared. A state where the church feels they have no need of reproof. They have no need even to pray. They have no need even to ask of the Spirit of God. They, they have no need. They, anyhow, they, they, they are just okay. Brothers and sisters, it is dangerous as Christians to feel that we have arrived. And I want to suggest to you that this is the state which these ten virgins found themselves in. As the bridegroom tarried, they slumbered and slept. And brothers and sisters, we need to observe that uh, while the coming of Christ is near, there is a delay. And let me take you with me to Signs of the Times. And um, this is um, August 13, 1894, paragraph 11. Oh, who we'll wait for the heavenly bridegroom are represented in the parable as slumbering, slumbering because their Lord delayed his coming. But the wise roused themselves at the message of his approach and responded to the message and their spiritual life was replenished. Underline that. Their spiritual discernment was not all gone. They sprang into line as they took hold of the grace of Christ. Their religious experience became vigorous and abundant, and their affections were set upon the things above. They discerned where was the source of their supply and appreciated the love that God had for them. They opened their hearts to, them to receive the Holy Spirit, by which the love of God was shed abroad in their hearts. Their lights were trimmed and burning and sent forth steady rays into the moral darkness of the world. They glorified God because they had the oil of grace in their hearts and they did the very work that their master did before them, went forth to seek and to serve those who were lost. Brothers and sisters, I want us to follow this closely. As uh, the bridegroom tarries, there is a slumbering that occurs in the camp of those who profess to be the children of God. 
And this happens because the Lord has delayed. But now, the, I want you to notice uh, the things which uh, the wise regain by waking up and heeding the message of the approach of their master and heeding this message of approach and gaining something and regaining something actually it means there is something that they had lost in slumbering brothers and sisters i want us to know and to understand brethren that there is much loss in slumbering and there is no gain in slumbering but God be praised because there is much that we gain if we are going to wake up. That's why the message for today is wake up, wake up people of God. And the Bible says, and the spirit of prophets actually says, as they responded to their message, number one, their spiritual life was replenished. Their discernment was not all gone, which means we have lost a level of discernment as the people of God because we have slumbered. That's why we have come to view matters at the same, at, at par with the world. That's why we have come to dress at par with the world. That's why we have, we have come to talk at par with the world. That's why we have come to, to to even think at par with the world. Brothers and sisters, if the Christian of today was awake, they were not going to view matters at, at the same level with uh, the world. And uh, brothers and sisters, brethren, I want us to acknowledge that as these took hold of the grace of Christ, if we are to do this today, our affections will be set on things above. No longer will we have a worldly line of thinking, a worldly understanding of things but we will be given a heavenly understanding of things and one thing which is going to happen is that we are going to take up the mission which god has entrusted unto us but this slumbering brothers and sisters let me take you to the story of redemption 367 paragraph 3 it says after the definite time had passed the true believers were still united in the belief that the end of the, all things was at end. But soon it became evident that they were losing to some extent their zeal and devotion and were falling into the state denoted in the parable uh, um, in the parable by slumbering of the virgins during the time time. And brothers and sisters, what this slumbering represents also it is evident that there is a loss of zeal amongst the people. And uh, this should not only be pictured uh, in light of uh, um, the present time, but it should be pictured uh, progressively as we um, leave the Advent movement, the Great Advent movement, from the times of 1844 up to the times, uh, uh, up to the present time. You will see that zeal concerning the coming of Christ, zeal concerning laboring for Christ, has waned as we reflect progressively from that time looking from history into the present. But you also see that uh, this is a reflection of the individual Christian experience. Brothers and sisters, we have lost the zeal that we had the moment we accepted this message. From the days that we accepted Christ as our personal savior, we can see that there is a declension in how we have held these truths, how we have been excited about the coming of Christ. There was a time when this message was preached and we were unsettled, but now it's preached and we are, un uh, we are comfortable in whatever we are doing. God forbid that we should lose our zeal and slumber as these virgins have done. And not only that, this is a big sliding, brothers and sisters. And here, Christian service, page 41, paragraph 2 says, I lay down my pen and lift up my soul in prayer that the Lord would breathe upon his backslidden people who are as dry bones, that they may live. The end is near, stealing upon us is so stealthy, so imperceptibly, so noiselessly, like the muffled tread of the thief in the night, to surprise the sleepers off guard and unready. May the Lord grant the Holy Spirit to bring his people upon their hearts that are now at ease, and that they may no longer sleep as do others, but watch and be sober. Uh, Brothers and sisters, 
the condition that we are, the slumbering, sleepy condition. It is a condition of backsliding. And the Bible says actually in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37, he who comes who comes and not tarry. But if any man draws back, the Lord will not be pleased with them. God is not pleased with the backsliding state of our people. God is not pleased by our backsliding condition, brothers and sisters. And we need to pray that he may breathe on us as upon the dry bones, that we may live. And uh, here is one thing, brothers and sisters, which the pen of inspiration is actually telling us. It's, it is telling us that the end is near. It's actually stealing upon us. It's noiseless. It's imperceptible. It's like the muffled tread of the thief in the night. And if we are not going to wake up, brothers and sisters, we are going to be found unready. We are sleepers of God. We are sleepers unready. And here is what the solution that is suggested from the book Christian Service. It actually says, may the Lord bring uh, to his people his Holy Spirit. Spirit upon hearts that are now at ease, that they may no longer sleep as do others, but watch and be sober. Brothers and sisters, the only solution to our sleeping condition is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And the answer to this, this outpouring of the Holy Spirit, why we have the midnight cry that we have heard in 1842 to 1844, which is represented as the preaching of the first, the second, the third angel's message. But we are also going to have another cry in our time. Remember, um, here we have been told that this parable of the ten virgins has been fulfilled but will continue to be present truth until the close of time. And let me take you to the book of Matthew chapter 25 and we are on verse 6. The Bible says, and at midnight there was a cry made, behold the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. So now the midnight uh, cry, actually, let me continue with you into the book, um, uh, Christ Object Lessons, page 414, paragraph 3. The coming of the bridegroom was at midnight, the darkest hour. So is the coming of Christ that will take place in the darkest period of this earth's history. The days of Noah and Lot pictured the condition of the world just before the coming of the Son of Man. The scriptures pointing forward to this time declare that Satan will work with all power and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, but of that night of darkness, God's light will shine. So brothers and sisters, it is at midnight, the darkest hour that God chooses to reveal himself to his people. And we have the, the condition of this world uh, in that time when Christ will come, it is as in the days of Noah. It is as in the days of Lot. And this shall be the condition. But now, brothers and sisters, we also need that to know that the devil will work timelessly. He will work tirelessly in order to deceive his, his people. In other words, he is going to introduce a counterfeit revival. But as he is introducing this counterfeit revival, brothers and sisters, brethren, we need to know that God's light will shine. And the book of Isaiah actually says uh, in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, Arise and shine, for thy light is come. The glory of God is risen upon thee, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen. Brothers and sisters, it is in the darkest hour that this world needs light. It is when people come to view sin as of no consequence that we need this light. It is even amongst God's people that we have come to be complacent. Amongst God's people that we have come to be comfortable in our powerlessness that we need this spirit of of God. And now notice the words of Isaiah. Let me repeat them with you. Arise and shine for thy light is come. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but the Lord shall rise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. I want you to notice brothers and sisters what is happening here. Christ is calling his people to rise up and shine. Because their light is coming, the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. But on the other hand, the world is 
engrossed in darkness. The people are groping in darkness because gross darkness cover, covers the people. And the Lord now arises upon us. And I want to, to I want you to notice that the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 60 is linked with the prophecy in Revelation chapter 18 verse 1. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory. Brothers and sisters, the, the, the darkness that covers the world in this time can only be expelled by the coming of the mighty angel of Revelation chapter um, 18 verse 1. And brothers and sisters, this the coming of this angel, it has a special work to do. It unites the first, the second, the third angel's messages and it now gives it the power and this is the loud cry. And brothers and sisters, we need to hear this. Let me read with you from the book, uh, Bible, Bible Commentary, uh, volume 7, page 984, paragraph uh, 5. We must not wait for the letter rain. It is coming upon all who recognize and appropriate the dew and the showers of that uh, of grace that fall upon us. When we gather up the fragments of light, when we appreciate the sure message of God who loves us to have us trust him, then every promise will be fulfilled. The whole earth is to be filled with the glory of God. And brothers and sisters, we need not to wait. It is now that we need to cooperate with God. It is now that we need to cooperate with the heavenly agents. It is now that we need to side ourselves on the side of God. That when this angel who lights up the whole world shall come, he will find us in the train and take us up together with him. So the slumbering condition of the ten visions, in the darkest hour at midnight, when the cry is yet, behold the bright bridegroom comes. It will not make ready those who have not been cooperating with God, but it will make ready, it will, it will actually empower those who have already been in the train. And um, in review and year out, May 11, May 27, 1862, it says, as the members of the body of Christ approach this period of the last conflict, the time of Jacob's trouble, they will grow up into Christ and will partake largely of his spirit. As the third angel's message swells into the loud cry and as the great power and glory attends the closing work, the faithful people of God will partake of that glory. It is the latter rain which revives and strengthens them to pass through the time of trouble. Their faces will shine with the glory of that light which attends the third angel. Brothers and sisters, it is this light that is going to empower his people. It is this light that is going to awaken the people from their slumber. It is this light, the preaching of the straight testimony, the preaching of the third angel's message. If any man worships the beast, receives his mark on his head or his forehead, if um, they are going to drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture. They have no rest day and night. Them that worship the beast and receive his image. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, it is only as we acknowledge the testimony of God. It is only as we acknowledge and keep the commandments of God and pray for the spirit of God and work to call others into this uh, keeping of the commandments, into this faith of Jesus, that we set ourselves in a position where the light of God will shine upon us. Actually, the later rain will be poured upon those who are cooperating with God in their life, in the daily living, and who are cooperating with God in the message that they are preaching and giving to the world. And brothers and sisters, let me take you with me, brethren, to Matthew chapter 27, 25, verse 7 to 9. It says, Then all those virgins arose, and they trimmed their lamps. And the foolish virgins said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us 
and for you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Brothers and sisters, we need to see that uh, these virgins, they were involved in a crisis. And the crisis was that uh, the bridegroom has come while they has come while they are slumbering and as he has come while they are slumbering it is in a crisis that character is revealed christ object lessons page 412 paragraph 1 both parties were taken unawares but one was prepared for the emergency and the other was found without preparation so now a sudden and unlooked for calamity something that brings the soul face to face with death will show whether the there is any real faith in the promises of God. It will show whether the soul is sustained by the grace of God. The great final test comes to those at the close of human probation when it will when it will be too late for the soul's need to be supplied. Brothers and sisters, I want to assure you, brothers and sisters, that there is a crisis that will test the character of each and every one of us that is about to come upon this world. And here it is linked, actually, the final uh, test comes at the close of probation when it will be too late for the soul's need to be supplied. Brothers and sisters, now is the time to fill our souls with the words of scripture, to study our Bibles as never before, to pray to God that he may fill our empty vessels with, the, with his spirit before it is too late. Actually, here is an interesting note from the book, The Great Controversy, page 613, paragraph 2. When the third angel's message closes, mercy no longer pleads for the guilty inhabitants of the earth. They have received the letter rain, the refreshing from the presence of the Lord, and they are prepared for the trying hour before them. Angels are hastening to and fro in heaven. An angel returning from the earth announces that his work is done. The final test has been brought upon the world. And all who have proved themselves loyal to the divine precepts have received the seal of God. Then Jesus seizes his intercession in the sanctuary above. Brothers and sisters, my brethren, I need us to heed this warning that one day probation is going to close. One day mercy shall cease to plead on behalf of the sinner. And when mercy ceases to plead on behalf of the sinner, the people of God, they have received, number one, the letter rain. Number two, they have received the seal of the living God. But they have not just received this seal, they have received because they have aligned their lives with the precepts of God. They have lived a life of obedience to a plain that said the Lord. And it is then that Christ will seize his intercession into the in the most holy place. So we need to understand, brothers and sisters, that the parable of the ten visions, the cry is heard, behold, the bridegroom cometh comes and this preaching of the third angel's message brothers and sisters is going to prepare a people ready to stand in the time of trouble and review and hear out August 19 18 90 paragraph 3 says when the third angel's message is preached as it should be power attends its proclamation it becomes an abiding influence it must be attended with divine power or it will accomplish nothing. I am often referred to the parable of the ten virgins, five of whom were wise, five foolish. This parable has been and will be fulfilled to the very letter, for it has a special application to this time and like the third angel's message has been fulfilled and will continue to be present truth until the close of time. I'm repeating brothers and sisters this message but we want to we, we want to notice that when the third angel's message is preached as it should be there is a power that is going to attend its proclamation there is an abiding influence that it will bring because it has been preached with power brothers and sisters this message has not gone has gone no further than it should go because it it has been preached as a lifeless theory. It has been preached as a message without power. It has been preached only with a form of godliness, but the power that should attend it has been denied. And brothers and sisters, this message, the third angel's message, 
actually intertwined with the parable of the ten virgins. It is the same with the angel of Revelation chapter 18 verse 1. In fact, the book testimonies for the church, volume 5, page 383, paragraph 2 says, The third angel's message, flying in the midst of heaven and erouding the commandments of God, the testimony of Jesus, represents our work. The message loses none of its force in the angels onward flight for John sees it increasing in strength and power until the whole earth is lightened with his with his with its glory and the course of God's commandment keeping people is onward ever onward the message of truth that we bear must go to nations tongues and peoples soon it will go with a loud voice and the earth will be lightened with its glory are we preparing for this great outpouring of the spirit of god is the question and brothers and sisters we need to understand that this message of the third angel's message which is intertwined with the parable of the uh, ten virgins it is the same with the angel of revelation chapter 18 verse 1 and it should increase onward from power to power from strength to strength from glory to glory and no slumbering should be should punctuate the preaching of this message but it should go on from power to power but brothers and sisters we also need to observe that uh, even if the message is going to march on from power to power to move on from power to power there is a laodicean state of the church that is experienced in this message but john sees this message increasing in power the question is are we preparing for the great outpouring of the spirit of god and brothers and sisters i want you to note that preparation is essential listen to what the book christ object lessons commenting on the parable of the ten virgins says page 413 paragraph 2 we cannot be ready to meet the bridegroom by waking when the cry is yet behold the bridegroom and then gathering up our empty lips to have them replenished we cannot keep christ apart from our lives here and yet be fitted for his companionship in heaven and uh, this is a, a very solemn testimony, brothers and sisters. If we are to receive the letter rain, the preparation needs to start by receiving the early. We cannot be ready by waking up when the cry is yet, behold, the bridegroom cometh. We cannot be ready for receiving the letter rain, the spirit of God, for the final march of the preaching of the gospel, for the final um, preparation and the final molding of our characters for heaven. If we have not been engaged in this work, in fact, the book says we cannot keep Christ apart from our lives here and be fitted for his companionship in heaven. And brothers and sisters, if we are to walk in Christ, with Christ in the courts above, we have to walk with him in the spaces below. And brothers and sisters, it becomes us to be ready, to be prepared for the second coming of Christ. And now, brothers and sisters, the Bible says um, these foolish virgins, they, says, they say unto to, to the wise, give us your oil for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered saying, not so lest there be not enough for us and you, but go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And uh, brothers and sisters, the work of preparation, we need to understand that preparing for the latter rain, preparing for the second coming of Christ, preparing for the final conflict which is just before us, it is a personal work. And I, I will read from the book Christ Object Lessons, uh, para, uh, page uh, 411, paragraph 2. It says, But character is not transferable. No man can believe for another. No man can receive the Spirit for another. No man can impart to another the character which is the fruit of the Spirit working. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, in the land, as I live, said the Lord, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter, they shall but deliver their own souls by their own righteousness. Brothers and sisters, we have come at a time where we rest because we think we have preachers who preach the present truth. We have come to a time where we rest, we are complacent because we think we have books which tell us of the goodness of God. We have come to a time where as church members we rest because we have pastors and evangelists who have preached to us and who are preaching the message. 
message. They will never preach this message on our behalf. If we are to be prepared for the coming of Christ, then we have to be prepared as individuals. If we are to be prepared for the receiving of the letter rain, then we have to receive it as individuals. Let me talk and let me emphasize this point, brothers and sisters, that the possession of the qualities of righteousness the possession of the qualities of godly of godliness in our parents we will not outdo those qualities in our in our in, in in ourselves the work of preparation is an individual work in fact let me take you with me to the book the great controversy it actually says uh, the work of preparation is an individual work we are not saved in groups the purity and devotion of one will not offset the want of these qualities in another. Though all nations were to pass in the judgment before God, yet he will examine the case of each individual with as close and searching scrutiny as if there were not another being upon the earth. Everyone must be tested and found without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Brothers and sisters, if we are to prepare for the receiving of the letter rain, this work is a personal work. If we are to wake up from our slumber, we don't wake up in groups. It's you who has to wake up. It's me who has to wake up. It is an individual work, brothers and sisters. We should never look for the time when all the church shall be revived and say we are now praying for the letter rain. The work must be begin with me. There's a singer who says let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me brothers and sisters if god is going to do a special work amongst us that work must begin with me that work must begin with you it is an individual work and we are not saved in groups brothers and sisters there are people who rest comfortable because they are associated to some prayerful men there are people who rest comfortable because they are associated to some preacher who is preaching the gospel to some evangelist in in distant land we need to do the work that god gives us to do now brothers and sisters the sad fact is as we finish these verses in the parable this is the call to preparation this is the call to reflect upon ourselves if we are going to come into this time and be ready to meet the bridegroom when he cometh the bible says of the foolish visions and while they went to buy the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him into the marriage and the door was shut brothers and sisters in the book of genesis chapter 6 verse 3 the bible says and then the lord said my spirit shall not strive with men continually seeing that he is but flesh and god is offering his spirit he says in the book of luke chapter 11 if you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your father which is in heaven give the spirit to them that ask of him brothers and sisters it is now that god is giving his spirit but the bible says in this narrative it seems as if a simple to read sentence but it's pegged and fraught with meaning they that were ready went in and the door was shut one day the door is going to be closed the door of mercy that has been open for centuries the door of mercy that has been open all along god calling his people to commandment keeping god calling his people to receive his spirit god calling people to receive pardon for their sins god calling people to receive peace that comes from above god calling people to live this lifeless this powerless form of christianity to receive a real experience with him this work shall one day come to its close and the bible says this they went afterward came also the other vision saying lord lord open to us but he answered and said verily i say unto you i know you not and brothers and sisters how painful it is that you've spent all these years attending church you have spent all these years reading your bible only for the lord to declare that i never knew you it becomes us in this uh, our brothers and sisters that we should be truthful in our worship we should be honest and sincere with ourselves we should acknowledge the emptiness of our vessels 
This Laodicean condition, brothers and sisters, of thinking we have it all. This Laodicean condition, condition of thinking we are in need of nothing. This Laodicean condition of thinking that we are clothed and ready. It should lapse. Christ is saying, as many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Be ye therefore zealous and repent. It's time to weep, brothers and sisters, to plead with God that he may pour his spirit upon us, to plead with God that he may pardon our sin, to plead with God that he may bring a revival upon us before it is too late, rather than to hear the proclamation that, yes, church, we have attended, but I never knew you. Brothers and sisters, we have heard about the Savior. We have known about the Savior. But the question that I want to leave you with in this episode, brothers and sisters, are you known of the Lord? Yes, he emptied that oil from his vessels into your vessel. Are you known of the Savior? And here is the admonition. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not neither day nor hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Shall we pray? Kind and loving Father, our God of mercy and compassion, we thank you for the blessings with which you shower our days and for the privilege of prayer. We thank you, Lord, that we need to prepare for the great outpouring of your spirit by cooperating with you today. And as such, brothers, as such, our Heavenly Father, we ask you that you pour your spirit upon us and prepare us to stand in the great hour of conflict. Our vessels are empty, Lord. Fill us with your spirit. We offer ourselves unto you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Until then, brothers and sisters, may the grace of God be with you from now until forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.